Hello everyone. Today we are going to study about the law of the chemical combinations. I hope you have been clear with the concepts we have done earlier. So, moving with the law of chemical combinations, the very first thing when we talk about the chemical combination, it sounds as that there is a combination of the one or the two chemicals. Fine, that will be following a particular set of the laws. So, if I have to define the law of the chemical combination, that means certain set of the laws, rules that are helping or that help us to know how the combination has taken place. That specifies that whether this kind of the combination will follow this rule or not. So, when I talk about the chemical combinations, there might be the two, you know, chemicals which are combining together and they're giving us the third product, let's say C, A and B combining together to give the product C. So, whether A and B, they are combining in a same ratio, whether they must be having the, uh, I would say that the same kind of the mass, this is something which we will understand from the different laws of the chemical combinations. So, the very first law that fall under the category of the law of chemical combination, it is the law of mass conservation. Before I explain that, I am really sorry that I forgot to tell you people that there are five laws of the chemical combination which is followed in the chemistry and the very basic, very important on the basis of which the entire chemistry is being studied is the law of mass conservation. Now very clear from the definition itself, law of mass conservation, conservation says that conservation of the mass. In any chemical reactions, when the reactants, they are reacting together to give us a chemical product, the masses of the reactants and the masses of the products, they remain the same. Let's see here, if I am having the element A, combining with the another element B and giving us the product C, the law of mass conservation says that whatever will be the mass of the A and B, it will be same of the compound C. So, the law of mass conservation, it says that the two elements combining together, having the weight, they will give us the product having the mass which is equivalent to their, their masses. So, hence, we could say that this is the law of mass conservation which, which help us to know that whenever the two reactants are combining together, they give us a single product. The mass of the reactants is always equal to the masses of the product. Let's talk about the very common example in chemistry hydrogen combines with the oxygen to give us water molecules. Now when I talk about this, it means here the two parts of hydrogen by weight, it combines with the 16 parts of the oxygen by weight and it gives us 18 parts of the water. Every time when I'm, I will be having the combination of the two elements, they will give us the third element or the compound we would say that having the same masses. Here 2 plus 16 is the 18, here if we talk about the mass, molecular mass of the water that is the 18. So whenever there are the two elements, they are combining together. They will combine together in a manner that the mass of the reactants is equivalent to the mass of the product. This is the law which I would also say that which states that mass is neither created nor destroyed. So this is the law which also states that mass is neither created nor destroyed and these days this law has been modified which says that this is not only the law of mass conservation but this is the law of mass energy conservation. From the mass energy conservation I mean to say that if we find that there has been a change in the mass of the reactants that are combining together to give the product, this means that that particular mass might have converted to energy. Now, from where did this come? It came from Einstein's theory of the relativity. Einstein's theory of relativity says that E is equal to mc square, where E is the energy, m is the mass and c is the velocity of the light. Now it says that whenever there is a chemical combination takes place between the two reactants to give the product, there is always a release or there is an absorption of the energy. If I find that there 
when a particular elements they were combining together the weights are not equivalent to that of the product it means that the particular mass might have converted to the energy fine but this energy change is so small because if i say that uh, e divided by m uh, this energy is equal to the mc square and if i have to find the change in the mass it is equivalent to the e by c square since the value of velocity of light is too high that i'll get the very low value of energy that means that the change in the mass will be negligible which will be very very small a minute change hence we say that the masses are equivalent to that of the of the reactants to that of the products so this is something which also states about the law of mass conservation mass energy conservation that if there is a, any change in the masses of reactants and products it means that the mass is neither created over there nor destroyed but there has been the conversion that has taken place from mass to that particular energy that is about the law of mass cons energy conservation this is the law which also states that law of indestructibility that means neither the creation nor the destruction of that particular mass there might be only with the conversion from the one particles to the another the uh, conversion in the sense of the energy of the one mass to the another in the form of the release of the energy or in the form of the uses of the energy so that was all about the law of the mass conservation we'll continue with the another law which is known as the law of the constant or the definite proportion so as the name says the law of the constant or the definite proportion it means that whenever the two elements they are combining together to give the third element or the third product the ratio in which that two particular elements they are combining that should be or a simple whole number ratio that will always remain a constant throughout the second law that we have to study here is the law of the constant composition or the definite proportions that states that a pure compound always contains same elements combined together in same definite proportion by weight from here i would mean to say that let's say we have the water with us we always know it's formed by the combination of hydrogen and the oxygen but if i carry the tap water or if i carry if i have the rain water with me will the composition of hydrogen and oxygen vary in both no not at all the reason being whenever we have the molecule of the oxygen it's always formed by combination of the hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio 1 is to 8 and hydrogen with the ratio of the 1 and the oxygen in the ratio 8 this is the ratio which will go everywhere which will be followed everywhere whether we are carrying a rain water whether i am having a tap water it's a distilled water the combination of the oxygen and the hydrogen it will take in the ratio 1 is to 8 for hydrogen and oxygen respectively this is something which is about the law of the constant composition now let's talk about uh, formation of the carbon dioxide whether the carbon and oxygen they combine together by burning of the candle or we would say that when there is a decomposition of the calcium carbonate or when i'm respiring i'm giving out the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide being formed by the combi combination of carbon and oxygen every time whenever it is formed they will be combining in the ratio 3 is to 8 so irrespective of the source whenever there is a pure compound which is formed it will contain the elements from which it is being formed in the same ratio every time in proportion of their weight they will be in the definite proportion by their weight so this is something which is very very important this law is very very important because this is something which is again forming the basis of the different five chemical laws of the combination so here we are with the law of the multiple proportions we have just studied about law of the two chemical combinations like the first one the law of the conservation of the mass and energy second one we have studied about law of the constant proportions this is the law of the multiple proportions that says that whenever we are having the two elements and those two elements they are combining together to form the product c that is the third product which is a compound then the mass of the one of the element it will remain fixed 
but the another one it might vary if it is varying it will be a, a simple whole number ratio for example let's say hydrogen it combines with oxygen and gives us water molecules fine in the proportion 2 is to we could say that 16 and if I say hydrogen it combines with the oxygen and the another product it might give us the hydrogen peroxide but the combination is of the hydrogen and oxygen only here there is the the ratio is the 2 is to 32 the proportion of the hydrogen is fixed by the means of the bait what if I talk about the oxygen its proportion it will go 16 to 32 that means it is varying a simple whole number ratio which is 1 is to the 2 and that is our law which states that whenever the two elements combine together to give the product the mass of the one of the element it remains fixed while that of the other it may vary but it will be a, a simple whole number ratio and that is in front of us two elements they were there to combine together fine when they combine together they were in the different one of the uh, element it was having the weight same in both of the compounds in both of the reactions but the another one which was the oxygen in first case it was combined in the ratio 16 and the other case when it gave us the hydrogen peroxide it was combined in the ratio 32 and when we took the ratio of both oxygen in both the products it came out in the ratio 1 is to the 2 and hence it proved our law of the chemical combination under the category of the multiple proportions now the fourth law that we have is the law of the reciprocal proportions it states that when we are having the two different elements and they are combining together with the third element let's say we have a b and they are the two different they are combining with the third element c now the weight of this particular one it will remain fixed but the other two it may vary over here but if they are varying they will be a, a simple whole number ratio that is what the statement says when the two different elements they combine separately with the same weight of the third element the ratio in which they do will be same or same simple some simple multiple of the ratio some simple multiple of the ratio in which they combine with each other for example let's say we are having hydrogen oxygen and sulfur now when hydrogen it combines with the oxygen it gives us water molecules it combines with the sulfur it gives us hydrogen sulfide fine so here the two parts of the hydrogen combines with the 16 parts of the oxygen to give us the water molecule and here the two parts of hydrogen combines with 32 parts of the sulfur to give us hydrogen sulfide so here the ratio is the 2 is to 16 and here is the ratio 2 is to 32 fine but if I take the ratio of oxygen and sulfur sulfur to oxygen that will be 32 is to 16 that is a simple whole number ratio of the 2 is to 1 fine now if I will combine these two elements separately that is the sulfur and oxygen when sulfur it combines with the oxygen it might give us sulfur dioxide here if I check the ratio it will be 32 is to 32 which is 1 is to 1 and if I check the another if I check this and uh, this one where I got the uh, ratio of sulfur and oxygen in these products from here we check it out that it is 2 is to 1 and 1 is to 1 which is a simple or we could say that multiple of the ratio we already had and the other case if I combine sulfur and oxygen together to give the sulfur trioxide and here I find it out here we are having uh, I would say that the 32 parts of the sulfur combines with 48 parts of the oxygen and it gives us sulfur trioxide the ratio is 32 is to 48 which is equivalent to the 2 is to 3 again this is the ratio which I would say that bears a simple or multi it is a multiple of the ratio we had earlier 2 is to the 1 so here the law which was law of reciprocal proportions has been proved when they say that we are having the two elements they are combining together with the third element fine the third element it is having the weight same in both the compounds formed by it with the different elements 
and when these two elements they are combining together rather than with this third element whose weight was kept constant now if they are combining together separately they will give us the ratio of their combination and the proportion in which they do so it will either be the same when they were having the ratio when it was being combined with the third element or the ratio will be the simple multiple of the particular uh, number i would say that for example we had the ratio 2 is to 1 and the other time it was 1 is to 1 which is a simple whole number ratio the multiple of that particular ratio and hence this is the law which explain us about the reciprocal proportions that we are having the two different elements in the combination with the third and when they are combining uh, separately they will give a ratio which is either the some particular ratio number or it will be a uh, multiple of that particular number so here we are just left with the last law which is the gay lussac's law of the combining volumes which states that whenever there are the similar conditions of the temperature and the pressure under those condition when the gases are reacting or the elements they are combining together to form a product the way in which they will do so they will be a, a simple whole number ratio for example let's say i'm having hydrogen and the chlorine combining together to give the hcl here the volume that is the, if i take the one you know the one unit of the hydrogen with the one unit of the chlorine they are giving us the hcl which is again the one unit so i would say that sorry it would be the two units they are combining the two gases the reacting gases they are combining in a manner that they are bearing a simple whole number ratio with their product so this is actually what is the definition of this uh, particular law is there that whenever the gases combine it is about the gases when it gases they combine together under similar conditions of temperature so this is there is a condition which must be kept in mind that this is only possible when they are being kept under the similar conditions of temperature and pressure at that time the volume of the reacting gases and the products will be a, a simple whole number ratio this is about the volumes please keep this thing in mind and example already told to you people hydrogen in combination with the chlorine giving me hcl so this was the if i take the one unit of the volume by volume then one unit by volume of this chlorine it will give us the two units by volume of hcl this is the gay lussac's law of the combining uh, of the combining volumes so students we have studied five laws of the chemical combination the very first one i'll repeat it the law of the mass conservation second one we had that was the law of the constant or the definite proportions third one the law of the multiple proportions the fourth one the law of the reciprocal proportions and the last one we had the gay lussac's law of combining volumes in these laws we have studied about the the way in which the chemicals or the elements they are reacting together the ratio they are bearing will it remain the same throughout or will it vary when there is a third element as well along with it now the question that can be there to come in the exam from this particular one either it could be individually asked please explain this particular law or giving its example stating the example for the same or it could be of the five marks explain the law of the chemical combinations where you must define each and every law along with their small simple example first of all mention the statement of that particular uh, question that has been asked to you along with the example in this way you can easily fetch the marks for the same so that was all about the five laws of the law of chemical combinations i hope each and every law is clear to you people and uh, that was all about it